Hi, Rob. Kirk here. Hey, thanks for sending your swing in for me to have a look at. Um, looking forward to trying to help you here, give you some ideas on, on how to move forward and what I think you need to work on. I'll start by saying I think you have a lot of nice attributes about your swing. Um, certainly looks like you work on it um, and you have some really nice uh, ways where your arm and the club shaft behave. So I think there's a, a couple of things that we can work on here to sort of help with what you mentioned were your issues, which is occasional heel strike um, and then the ball starting left of your target. So, you know, I think I think the heel strike um, is most noticeable or the reasons for why I think it happens are most noticeable from this view. Um, and we'll go through that. And then I think your left strike uh, or left start line can be sort of most seen from the face on view, which I'll do. Um, do after this and I'll also splice in a video of me doing a lot of the demonstrations. So I think that I think that ultimately I'm just gonna run it forward here. I think ultimately your um, occasional heel strike comes from this point in your downswing from here to the ball um, how sort of behind and under um, your hands the club is um, and how far sort of to the right of the club head your hands are or, or how far from the left of your hands the club head is at this point late in your downswing with your chest really opening so i think we've got to address that um, and the reasons why the, those are there and get that club kicking out um, being on on plane if you will a little bit more so i'll take you through this and i and i think look i think in these things it's really easy to just point out everything that's different and you know try to show things that are wrong, but we've ultimately got to give you a couple of ideas here that's going to make a change that sticks, um, and, and I want to show that. I'm going to talk a lot about your backswing. My guess is, knowing how much golf you've played, that you've you've seen this. I'd love to maybe catch up over a phone call sometime for you to tell me what you've worked on, because my guess is you've seen this move. I think you even described it, kind of an out move at the top. I'd love to know what you've tried to do, but I'm going to point out to you why I think you do it, or how I think you could maybe stop doing it. Um, and I've chosen Adam Scott here. I know we'd all like to swing like him, but he has a lot of the same stuff in terms of how his arm and the club lines up um, that you do. He doesn't have that out move, but I think if we could take that away from you, there's some similar stuff here to learn from. So just make some observations. As you take the club away, your left arm stays pinned to your chest and stays at the very same height it is at address. It does not raise up your chest at all um, to waist high, in my opinion. I mean, your arm, I bet if you took your chest, you know, froze you there and took it back to address, your left arm is in the same position right there that it was at address. And I don't think if you look at Adam Scott or a lot of these great players, that is the case. I think their left arm is raising or lifting early in the backswing, all right? So at waist high here, virtually waist high, his left arm and your left arm are in incredibly different positions. Right arm to an extent, but this is mostly left arm driven, okay? Um, if you didn't do what you did at the top, I might not have anything to say about that. But because you do what you do at the top, I think we need to try to change that to see if it makes something different happen at the top, all right? So keep it on going here. Your hands are already in, so they're gonna continue to go. Um, they're almost behind your body at this point. Now, from right here, just making an observation, your, left, your shoulders appear to stop turning. And now your left arm starts to do a lot of that raising. I mean, look at its level to the zipper on your chest. It starts to cover that zipper. And then here, as it transitions, it starts to move off your chest, like losing its pressure connection to your chest and moving across the screen, okay? Now your shoulder, and it doesn't appear to be a massive shoulder-driven thing. Like a lot of these, you know, hands that you see come flying across the screen up here are people like heaving at it with their shoulders. You're not doing that, right? You may look like, oh my gosh, this guy's gonna be over the top, but this is about as long as you go over the top. I mean, your, your, your hands go across the screen, and then you start doing brilliant stuff to lower them, and get them back down. I mean, it's pretty awesome there. Um, but I think because where they're coming from, that club is just dipping too low for too long. So 
what I would say that you need to try, but we ultimately have to chain. We have to get that left arm keeping its connection with your shoulders in transition and simply lowering on your chest. So look at Adam Scott here, right? He's arriving at the top in a completely different way than you are. His hands are coming in from a different direction and there's no momentum. One thing I think with you, your hands are so deep and around and then they start lifting then you obviously have a tendency to, to shift them out. And they're almost headed that way in that little backswing loop you do, if you will. Now, maybe we could change that completely or not. I don't know. We'll have to see. But ultimately, we need to get, if you watch Adam Scott, right, his arms, his left arm to me is glued to his chest. Frankly, it's probably, the pressure is probably getting greater if we could measure it. And his arms are lowering. His shoulders are probably opening a touch, but not a ton to this point. But his arms and hands are lowering back down. And I'll describe that in the, in the demonstration I send you. So from here, right, his arms are deeper than you are. And his shoulders are definitely a lot more closed than yours are at this point. Okay? So as you as he starts to continue to lower the club and maybe start opening his shoulders his club is going to want to start to kick out towards the golf ball yours because your shoulders are open and your hands were out as that club lowers it's having a hard time i mean it's still under that plane excessively um, well before it gets to the ball where his is out on it and coming into the strike there so I think this is what exposes the heel for you a lot. All right, so I'm going to, as I said, I think I need to describe this to you in a video where I'm demonstrating it. But our key is we've got to start to change that transition piece a little bit. Change the way your left arm behaves on your body. Change how much your shoulders open early. I do think changing your takeaway will help you achieve this. Um, but I think the things you have incredibly going for you, which I don't get to see very much, is I think you have perfect arm to club shaft alignments. As good as I've seen, like really honestly, as good. I mean, just as good as Adam Scott's club shaft to his arm, flat left wrist. I mean, I can almost say I like the pitch of your shaft better. The left wrist is perfectly flat. I mean, a lot of these things that everybody's going for. The right arm is incredibly under you know, external rotation. There's a lot of stuff here that you can move for. I think we've got to change that pivot and how the left arm operates. All right, so I'm going to show you the face on, and then I'm going to do um, another video. So I'm going to take this away. I'm having to sort of record as we go here. So I want to show you your face on, and... Um, I think this is going to shed a lot of light on what you need to do um, in your swing. Give me a second here, too. All right, so I'm using Adam Scott again. I want to point out a couple of things that I think you need to become very, very aware of in your swing. Maybe or maybe not, you've thought about it. All right, uh, setup is great. You don't have to do anything with your setup. Your backswing turn from this side looks really, really good. I mean, you're loaded over your right leg. You're turning your shoulders beautifully. I mean, you are turned behind the ball as well as anybody that I've seen. Um, certainly not a mid-handicap looking backswing to this point. I would argue that it's almost identical to Adam Scott's. Okay? Here's where I think... And I think this move is what's going to help you with your left arm. Here's the problem in my opinion, okay? I want you to watch Adam Scott. I'm going to have two distinct things. Right. First thing I'm going to mark here, I want to mark the height of his left shoulder. I'm going to try my best to draw right through the middle of what I think his shoulder is. All right? I want you to start watching how this weight is pressuring Weight is pressuring, pressure to the left, whatever you want to call it. How it's starting to move to his left as he's finishing down. As he's finishing his backswing, his weight is starting to pressure into his front leg. 
That is delaying what the arm is doing. That is keeping it pinned against the chest. The next thing I want you to be really aware of is his left shoulder is lower. It is lower than it was at the top. Like if I mark it here with yellow, I might have gone just a hair low, but not much. All right. And I would say about right here, it starts to work back up and around. Now let's watch yours. First thing we're gonna watch is your pressure. I really don't see any pressuring to your left. I may start to see a touch now, but it's almost only rotation. Okay, certainly nothing pressuring left as you were finishing going back. And the next thing that just became glaringly obvious to me, that like really important, watch your left shoulder. It's higher. I mean, right now it's higher. I'll go one more click to left arm parallel. I mean, it's, it's like, maybe I drew that just a touch high. It's up there. Adam Scott's is on the other side of that line. And right here, your left shoulder is up into your chin. And your body is incredibly behind the ball, like way behind it. All right? Your, look at your left shoulder there. Look at his left shoulder. Look at the forwardness. I'm going to try to... I think you mentioned staying behind the ball. I think you got to take. Oh, sorry. I think you got to take that thought out. All right. I think this is why your balls start left. I think everything is too far from your golfing position to the right. And I think that that's. I think you're hitting the ball with the face closed um, relative to the path because you're too far to the. You're too far back. I'm going to draw a line on your hip. Sure, there's a reference for you. Do a line here and do a line on your head. Let's do one with him. Just hip line, hip line, head line. So, I mean, look at the back line. Look how much space he's made. His head is a half, well, a quarter of a head forward. Yours is a, yours is behind where it started. Your left hip is a little bit more forward. His is more forward, but his upper body to me is more over the golf ball. He hadn't even hit it yet. There he goes. More over the ball than you. So, I, but I think I will say this, Rob. I think a lot of that is for you to fix the transition move. All right. So. I'm gonna um, cut the video off here and grab a club and then um, try to demonstrate some of this stuff I think you need to work on, all right? Hey Rob, hey, I just wanna go through um, a couple of these ideas and see me demonstrate it. And, and you know, I just, look, it's easy when you start looking at your own swing assist side note to say, oh, it's all, it's all terrible. And I really don't think that's the case um, with you. So I think, I think you do a ton of things really well. I think you've almost gotten the hardest part, which are all these angles, these club to hand angles. I wish mine were as good as yours were, to be honest with you. So I think you've gotten a lot of that. I think if you clean up some of the other things, I think you're really going to improve. I mean, it really, yeah, maybe your transition looks a little out, but the rest of your swing doesn't look like a mid handicapper swing. I mean, this looks like it should be a single digit swing. So um, I think we can help you with that. So I just want to clarify a couple of the points um, that I talked about here. And, and look, again, maybe a call would be helpful because I know you've thought about this and sometimes you've tried a lot of things. My guess is you've tried to address this, um, this transition move you have. Uh, maybe you haven't, but my guess is you probably have. So I'm going to give you a couple ideas about why I think it happens um, or at least demonstrate what I told you in the video. So first and foremost, I'll kind of go what you do. What I'm saying is your left arm here starts like on your side of your body to dress. And as you take the club from address to waist high, I think your shoulders do all of that. And I don't think this arm has changed angle to your chest at all. All right, so there's my left arm inward like yours is. I think what these good players are doing, to some extent, 
I think they're starting to sort of lift their arm, or they're moving their arm up their chest. Some, somebody that comes to mind right off the bat who does it the most is Dustin Johnson. He kind of looks like he goes out over his pec and then around, and that's kind of like, like that, something like that. Maybe you need to feel a little bit of that, but ultimately, I think you need to start getting this left arm moving back straighter and allowing your left upper arm to start raising up your chest um, as you take the club back. So when you, if you, did, if you uh, video yourself, you know, try to take your hands towards the camera for a little bit in your take back. So going back to your swing, once you're here in this deep position, right, you start to raise, so you're turned almost fully here. Your arms start to raise up and then they have this outward motion. They have this arm independently going away. I'm, I'm overdoing it, but they have this arm going away from your chest, so there's space in here. Uh, whether that's the right arm doing it or the left arm doing it, don't know, but it's happening for sure. A little bit of shoulders, but mostly your arm. I think this move where it's in here and then having to climb from this really deep position even if you didn't do as much as you did, you'd have to come out some, um, which I think given your pattern, we gotta take that away because you already know how to go out really well. We need to take that away. So ultimately, what I think needs to happen is that you need to arrive at the top differently. So I think you need to get your arm going out more and up early. And then when your shoulders start to turn and kick in, it starts to run your hands around this way, right? Your arm's gonna start loading across your chest differently rather than here up and that way, right? It's going to start like almost loading back across your chest. So once we get that, that's like half of it, all right? Once we get that, we got to change this left arm's behavior um, at the top of your golf swing, right? So ultimately, I think you're going to have to feel like your shoulders are staying good turn, but staying closed, and your left arm is staying like pressured, your pec and your left arm staying pressured as you lower this club down. What I mean by lowering it is that your arm is going to lower on your chest. You're not pulling, but you're lowering it down. So your right elbow is connecting back down. Your left arm is lowering. It is not losing its connection at all. With your shoulders back a little longer, I think that's what it's going to do, is get you in a position here to where with your wonderful wrist angles, your arm's going to be more in than it's ever been. And then as you go to hit the ball, this club can start to pitch out a little bit and not be so under with your hands up and the club down. So it's not gonna expose the hosel as much. Kinda of getting the club pitched out. So the keys are a little bit different takeaway. The big thing that has to change though is the left arm connection at the top. It's got to stay pinned. It's got to stay like, it's got to stay on your chest and the club lower down. Now, what we'll talk about, and your shoulders are gonna be a little close, what we're talking about from the face on view, or what we're gonna talk about from the face on view is a big part of this. So two distinct things, left shoulder, where it's going, and the pressure. I'm gonna address the pressure first, right? So you do this amazing looking backswing turn here, pivot. I don't know if I can even do it as well as you do it. But then at the top, there's not a lot of pressure movement in that first phase. You've gotta get that pressure. You can practice this in your living room. You've gotta get it going right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. So as you're finishing your backswing, you're starting to put a little pressure into your left foot. A couple things, if your arm's passive, that's gonna pin your arm against your chest more, right? Your pressure not moving gives your arms time to like go where they wanna go. You gotta put those things, you know, you know, lock them down a little bit. That's number one. Second, and I think you do this shoulder thing a lot because you're trying to get the club under and you probably need to. But as we change your backswing, you've got to change, or at least mentally, know where this shoulder's supposed to go. So once you've made this nice turn, this transition is pressure into your front foot. That shoulder is staying away from your chin, and it's going down a couple inches. Right? These good players, this shoulder is down a few inches to about here, and then it comes up back and around. So I want you, and yours goes almost like, I'm probably exaggerating, but it's something like that. All right. So I want you to feel like it's shoulders are staying closed, right, early. Pressure's into your front foot. Arms are lowering and the shoulder's staying low and away from your chin, all right? That's gonna help you ultimately arrive at the ball, I think, with your hands a little bit more forward than you've ever had them. Help squeeze that ball out to the right 
and get you sort of more up on top of the ball, compressing it a bit better. Those balls start left to me because I think you're like this and you're just you're adding some loft and, and closing the face as you hit it. So look, um, you know, I want this to work for you, so we may need to get on a call and I'm happy to do this and ultimately it's about helping you hit the ball better. So um, let's make this work and please reach out and um, thanks for your time.